A newsman, a colleague, and a friend. Tonight, the KCRA 3 family and TV viewers across Northern California are mourning the loss of local TV news icon Mike Boyd. He was a legend in Sacramento area news, a loving father and husband, and for those of us here at KCRA 3, he was a valued friend and colleague. Mike Boyd passed away peacefully at Sutter Memorial Hospital early this morning. He was 74 years old. For nearly 40 years, Boyd came into our homes, leaving behind a journalistic footprint that few will ever match. KCRA3's Tom Duhane worked side by side with Mike for more than 30 of those years. He gives us a look back at an incredible career and an incredible life. This is the sound of news. Hello, I'm Mike Boyd, welcoming you to the news portion of KCRA's Colorama. The life and career of Mike Boyd in many ways parallels the history of KCRA itself. After graduating from the University of Maine, Mike held a variety of jobs in broadcasting, including sports director and host of a kids show. He was already a wily veteran when he arrived in the capital city at KCRA in 1963. Authorities have no leads upon which to work, but this much is known. $30,000 has been invested here in a successful program which is now ended. He's a reporter that has all the tools because he brings back the story, the facts, he gets it right, he often gets it first, he's got a nose for news. He is maybe the best reporter I've ever known in the business. Throughout the next four decades, Mike Boyd helped to define KCRA history. He was mostly known for his standout coverage of many of California's highest profiled criminal cases. In 1967, after Sacramento gunman Aaron Mitchell was convicted of murdering a police officer, Mike's riveting eyewitness account of Mitchell's execution at San Quentin was shown throughout the country and is still seen in documentaries today. At precisely 10.04, gas was let into the chamber. Mitchell had bowed his head after making one audible comment. Placing his left hand to his forehead, he muttered, I'm Jesus Christ. He caught the eye of his minister at that time, nodded to him, and looked about once more. Then the fumes got to Mitchell. He was unconscious in about 30 seconds, and he died eight minutes later. On to Chicago and let's win there. A year later, in the summer of 68, Mike was part of a KCRA news crew at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles and was on the air when Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated. Again, the station's coverage was beamed across the nation. As it must be for all of those at home viewing this, uh, people here cannot believe it. A crowd of uh, an estimated perhaps 1,000 or 1,500 now dwindled to a matter of a few hundred milling about outside in the lobbies. As uh, we stand here in the embassy room, the senator's body has been or not body, the senator has been removed. The seriousness of his injury is not yet confirmed. Through the years, Mike's most memorable moments on the crime beat included landmark interviews with two of America's most notorious serial killers, Dorothea Puente and Charles Manson. Should there be a supreme penalty for committing a crime? What do you think? I'm the one who's asking you. Yeah, but if I don't give you the answer that you want... It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't it's matter. It's your opinion. Well, uh... I don't have the authority to say anything like that. You have the authority to believe. I believe what I'm told to believe. Don't you? In 1980, Mike was the first reporter allowed to talk with Manson after he had spent five years at the Vacaville State Hospital. What is this magnetism that people keep referring to? And it's, it's been beyond that. People writing you, wanting to meet you, your people that you had in the desert. Mm -hmm. What is the you, magnetism? Why don't you answer that question? I'm asking that question. Well, can't you see? Well, tell me, what is it? Well, what do you think it is? Do you know? Do you know? Don't play games with me. It's no Seriously. game. I know. That's why. That's why you're asking me questions, and I'm not asking you questions. We'll Perhaps the pinnacle of Mike's career came in 1988 during his coverage of Sacramento's F Street murders when boarding house landlady Dorothea Puente slipped away from authorities after seven bodies were discovered buried in her backyard. A week-long search throughout California and Mexico followed. She was finally captured in Los Angeles. KCRA chartered a Lear jet in the middle of the night and sent Mike to cover Puente's transfer back to Sacramento. Detectives returned Puente on the station's plane, and during that flight, 
Mike conducted his historic interview with Puente. I have not killed anyone. I told you that. I have not killed anyone. The checks I cashed, yes. Well, a lot of people have wondered a lot of things. So if you had anything to say to them, maybe they could find out a little more about what kind of person you are. That's all I was asking. I don't want to talk right now. Perfectly all right. But I told you, and I'm ready to talk, I'll talk to you. Later in his career, Mike also reported on the health beat as well. Medical experts credit his 1986 series on detecting colorectal cancer with saving hundreds of lives. In all, his career took him across California, throughout the United States, and around the world. He's been at the anchor desk, behind the Iron Curtain, flown on Air Force One, and even covered the Beatles. Well, 11 years ago, the Beatles played music to a young teen crowd which drank Coca-Colas. I read the news today, oh boy. Mike also interviewed political icons, Hollywood legends, and American heroes. Icon, a hero. How do you want to be remembered for everybody? Well, I don't know. Uh, probably <laughs> what, what you see is what you get, you know. <laughs> Mrs. Reagan, looking ahead to a political future, there are other races. Uh, there have been rumors circulated about the governor being interested in the presidency. I don't think I'd be, I don't think I'd be for it. And I, and I regret saying that because I still basically believe that men who are not politicians should get into politics. I do believe that. Simply by the numbers, Mike's time at KCRA was impressive. 38 years spanning nine presidents and thousands of stories, series, and specials. It all, Mike spent a half a century in broadcasting, creating a body of work that is truly unique in its style, its diversity, and its impact. A remarkable career by a remarkable reporter who lived his life full of energy, passion, and integrity. Mike is survived by his wife of 25 years, Jackie. Mike also had five children, Michael Jr., Jerry, Diana, John, and Michelle. Not large in physical stature, but certainly large in presence. There is little question that Mike Boyd touched the lives of many different people in and around the Sacramento area.